States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all very much. Sorry, my laptop's not showing any internet. Mm. Okay, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> recognition of Lucas Shane Halls and Lisa Reffitt and Gloria Carvey. So I invited um, them in. They have done so much for Stacy's closet <coughs> and the endeavors that they're uh, taking on in regards to scholarships and funding for students moving forward. So wanted to recognize this Gloria. She's not coming. Lisa and Lucas, and if you would stand, please, and share a little bit about what you're doing with Stacy's Closet and some of the funds and the support to Rochester students that's going to bring. So Stacy's Closet came out of a need for kids that, you know, whether it's hygiene or clothes, it was housed in the nurse's office and then um, got big enough to where it kind of took on its own room um, behind the library there at the middle school. So it'll have clothes, it'll have hygiene products, it'll have school supplies, stuff like that. Um, Deanna Vanabashi and Valerie Good are kind of heading that up. They were able to get all the orders around. Um, I think it's a little bit over eight grand what the foundation is giving to get the room set up and get going with what it needs. And then additional items that we're doing is we wanted to make sure that we captured youth at elementary to the middle school with Stacy's Closet to the high school. So the elementary, we're working with Times Theater. And um, every month, um, one movie for 12 and under will be free for the entire year. And our goal is that we hopefully we can continue to do that year after year. And then for the high school, on um, the athletic teams, we're hosting athletic dinners. For them so like tonight the tennis team is having pizza and ice cream last Thursday night the football team we served over 50 guys and they had a taco bar and so those are just some of the things that we're doing to try to support all levels within the school yeah the scholarship is fully funded and ready to go proud of you. Okay. And, uh, Lisa, if you want to go, you're welcome to go. Lucas has to stay. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you can go if you need to. You've got, I mean, Cassie's here, so if you need to go, have a good evening. <laughs> All right. Item C. Uh, recess the regular board meeting at this time. Do I hear a motion? Do we have a meeting on it? What? We just, we just declare it so. Declare it so. All right. <laughs> and we will open the public hearing on our budget. Um, there are, uh, that was in our board packet, uh, three plus pages. And um, I'm sorry, this thing, oh, Scott, can you help me get on the internet here? What the heck? Is RCSC guest? Uh-huh, it's kicking out. The notice to the taxpayers. Do we need to read that whole thing to our taxpayers? No. No. Um, it is available on our website under the agenda items for today, and it would be the public hearing. Do the resolution and vote on the resolution to okay. adopt capital projects. Okay, and then uh, we have a resolution to adopt the, thank you very much. It's still coming up as a question mark. I got nothing. Hey, sorry. Do I need to read the resolution then? 
You need to read from the middle where it says, therefore be it resolved. Therefore be it resolved by the Board of Trustees that the plan entitled 2024 Capital Projects Plan, this resolution, and is adopted oh my gosh, as the Board of Trustees Plan with respect to capital projects. Be it further resolved that the Board of Trustees shall submit a certified copy of this resolution to the Department of Local Government Finance as required by IC 20-40-18-6. Any questions, comments, or complaints? I have a question about the notice to the taxpayers. The meeting time is, the date would be accurate, but the time is not for our October meeting, unless we're meeting at midnight, which that would be unique, but I guess possible. <laughs> Um, does that matter or does that need to be corrected? Do those need to be corrected? So the public hearing time is at 6.30, the adoption meeting time? He says at 12, least on what I see is yeah. midnight. Yeah. Unless that's been corrected from what I've seen. Midnight madness. Yes. I mean, <laughs> it might have a little spark that meeting. Meeting. <laughs> Todd's in for it. I mean, it sounds like he is. I'm, I will take care of that correction. Thank you, Todd. So it's kind of hard to even lock in. Is it a lock in? Lock in? <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, we'll move on. Uh, we need to vote on the um, capital projects resolution. No, no, no. Not until next meeting. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Casey. And uh, then we have a resolution to adopt the bus replacement plan. Therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Trustees that the plan entitled Bus Replacement Plan, this resolution, and is adopted as the Board, thank you, <laughs> she's making it bigger for me, uh, <laughs> is adopted as the Board of Trustees plan with respect to the school bus replacement plan. Be it further resolved that the Board of Trustees shall submit a certified copy of this resolution to the Department of Local Government, Government Finance as required by IC 20-40-18-9. And we will vote on them at the next meeting. Any questions, comments, or concerns about our resolutions? Okay. Um, any comments from anybody at the public hearing? If, if none, then we will go ahead and uh, end the public hearing and resume our regular board meeting. All right, next we have uh, consent items. Approval of the minutes from the August 21st, 2023 regular meeting session. Um, did everybody get a chance to read that? Any questions or concerns that we need to uh, correct in that one? Jenny, you've got an EUI for this stuff, so. I wasn't here though. I mean, I read it, so I, I read it was good. I we, here. we weren't here though, so I don't know. Okay, and Mark zoomed in, okay. <laughs> Um, so, uh, this is, I would entertain a motion we accept the, um, board minutes from the, where am I? I am using my marbles. Yeah. For the August 21st regular meeting, not only was I, was I not here, I don't know that I'm here right now. All right then. Uh, it, I would entertain a motion that we accept that as presented. So moved. Casey Second. and Jenny. All right, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries seven to zero. Next, we have the approval of certific certification of the executive meeting held August 21st, 2023. And that's, um, any questions or concerns about, that's just a blip. We don't put any details in the paperwork, so. There's just 
Where? The sheriff has one R. <laughs> That's the only thing. Are you there, Amber? Got it. Okay. So I would entertain a motion um, that we accept the uh, approval of the certification of the executive session with the uh, amendment as <laughs> stated. So moved. Casey. Second. Steven. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries seven to zero. Financial report. Hello, Todd. <laughs> good afternoon. Good evening. And good night. There you go. <laughs> All right. In August, in the education fund, we had receipts of one million thirty thousand one hundred and thirty-two dollars and sixty cents. Expenses in August of one million one hundred and twenty-four thousand seven hundred sixteen dollars and sixty cents. Our cash balance at the end of August, the education fund is eight hundred and thirty-five thousand nine hundred fifty-three dollars and forty cents. Debt service fund we had receipts of seven thousand forty-eight dollars and seventy-two cents. No expenses in August. The cash balance at the end of August in the debt service fund is $1,175,046.29. And for those of you that were paying attention, I did not update the graph in the top part of that sheet, so I will do that. Um, operations fund in August, we had uh, receipts of $9,351.09. We had expenses of $667,330.83. Our cash balance at the end of August in the operations fund is $351,373.20. I would like to add that um, in some of the time that I was off uh, taking care of some personal things that um, we paid for buses and I had intended for that to come out of the GO bond and that didn't happen so I will be making that change in August. That was approximately two hundred seventy-eight thousand dollars. Okay. Anything else, Todd? Uh, that's it. Other than uh, open any questions that you might have. Questions from the board. I just noticed that with that correction, then with the buses, that means two months in a row that year over year operations fund expenses are down a little bit which is excellent so we appreciate you and everyone else on the team working hard to look at every expense since that has uh, been a concern thank you yes it has been and the uh, operations group the technology the food service or the food service the transportation <coughs> need, are doing an excellent job of fixing taking care of issues that we have in a longer term way uh, preventive maintenance etc that is slowly starting to <coughs> so I'd like to shout out to those those groups as well okay moving on uh, for approval of claims anything to share on the claims Todd I do not okay any questions from the board And moving on to the payroll uh, for August 25th, 2023, and September 8th, 2023, totaling $996,192.45. Any questions or concerns there? All right. Uh, if everybody, uh, if there are no questions or concerns from the board or the community, we'll go ahead and uh, make a motion that we accept the um, claims, payroll, and uh, financial report as presented. So moved. Thank you, Mark. Second. Second. I think it's two. <laughs> so many decisions. Okay. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> All right. And moving on to item J, resolution just okay. determining need for projects. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I just think we're good enough for this. <laughs> All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries seven to zero. Before we move on, since Todd's on here with us, um, have we gotten the 
updated funds from the COVID that we've been missing for As for reimbursement, Todd? We got, we were reimbursed sometime in the first half of the year. We, we, did, we received that, we still have, we're probably out right now about $400,000 to be reimbursed and I haven't really thought too much about it. Uh, I know there's some, some I, I have to do some uh, work on that grant to make sure that we uh, fulfill the, uh, lack of a better word, educational catch up um, portion of that that we have to to uh, live by, which is about 650,000. So I wanna make sure that we hit that and don't, that we aren't, that, that we're compliant and not, don't draw any attention to that, so. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, next we have um, the resolution determining the need for projects. And uh, does that need to be read aloud? Lauren? Depends what it looks like, I can't see it. What? I can't see it yet. <laughs> Same. Can you see around me? I can. Uh, be it resolved. You can start from there at the bottom. All right, then. Be it resolved that a need exists for the projects and that the projects cannot be funded from sufficient funds available to the school corporation and that this board proceed to take such steps as may be necessary to secure the projects and leasing of such school facility as provided by the Indiana Code, Title <coughs> 20, Article 47, Chapter 3. Um, it was again available on the, uh, on board docs for the public and the community, and everybody get a chance to look through that. Any questions? So, if everyone is in uh, agreement, or uh, if everyone is ready, we will go ahead and uh, I entertain a motion that we move forward with this. So moved. Casey? Second. Mark. All right, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. Next up, we have the resolution approving the preliminary plan, plans, form of lease, and authorizing publication of notice of lease hearing. And again, we move to the be it resolved. <coughs> Are you there? Yeah. Yep. Be it resolved that the terms and conditions of the proposed form of lease and the documents are approved and agreed to as the basis for a hearing as required by law and that such hearing should be held by this board upon the necessity for the execution of such lease and whether the lease rental provided therein is a fair and reasonable rental for the proposed portion of the building prior to final determination of such questions so that this board may determine whether to exceed such lease as now written or as modified. Be it further resolved that the secretary of the board is authorized and directed to publish a notice of such hearing as required by law. Questions? Okay. Um, if there are no questions, we'll go ahead and approve um, <coughs> approve the resolution. So moved. Thank you, Jenny. Second. And Casey. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries seven zero. And the third resolution, or uh, the third resolution reapproving formation of building corporation. Did you explain this at the study session, didn't you? Okay. Any questions about that? This is where we had the two and we needed to merge them into one. And I had to sign for it. And it better be legal. Oh, I thought we left it too. Huh? Uh, I thought it was left as. Two portions. Well, we're reapproving the building. This is a resolution to fill that. Correct. To form right. the group. Right. To form the, the two into the one. 
Is that what we're talking about here? No, this is saying that the building corporation has been formed and that you still want it there. Yes. Okay. To be able to lease the school for this new barn. Okay. You're just reaffirming their existence and you still want them. Got it. All right. So be it resolved. Have we got to be it resolved here? Yeah, there's quite a bit here. <laughs> Section one. Be it resolved by the Board of School Trustees, the Board of the School Corporation, as follows. Section one. This is hereby determined to be proper and in the public interest of the citizens of this school corporation to reapprove the incorporation of the building corporation known and designed as the Rochester Community School Building Corporation for the purpose of financing, removing, constructing, and equipping certain school facilities and leasing same to the school corporation. Section two, that providing for the finance financing of section two, followed by section three, thank you. That the articles of the incorporation and bylaws of the building corporation previously presented to the board are hereby reapproved. Section three, that provided for the financing, renovating, constructing, and equipping of such school facilities by the building corporation and the lease of same to this school corporation is in the public interest of the citizens of this school corporation and it is proper public is a proper public purpose for which the board agrees to cooperate with the building corporation to assist in fulfilling the requirements of all agencies of the federal state and local governments section four that the issuance, sale, and delivery by the building corporation of one or more series of bonds designated Rochester Community School Building Corporation ad valorem property, ad valorem property tax first mortgage bond series 2023 or such other name or series designated as the determine, as determined at the time of the sale, the bonds in the aggregate principal amount of approximately $6,105,000 hereby approved. Section five, this is fun. That upon the redemption or retirement of the bonds, the school corporation will accept from the building corporation title to such school facilities free and clear of any and all liens and encumbrances thereon. Section six, that this board hereby reapproves the current directors of the building corporation. Section seven, that the building corporation may issue, sell, and deliver the bonds pursuant to the applicable laws of the state of Indiana, may encumber any real property or equipment acquired by it for the purpose of financing the construction and equipping of such school facilities and may enter into contracts for the sale of the bonds and the construction and the acquisition of such school facilities. Section 8, the school corporation reasonably expects that tax-exempt obligations issued by or on behalf of the school corporation, including the bonds as well as other bonds and temporary loan warrants of the school corporation will not exceed $10 million in calendar year 2023. The bonds in the amount not to exceed $6,105,000 are hereby designated as quality, qualified tax exempt obligations for purposes of section 265B of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 as amended. Section nine, the school corporation reasonably expects that tax exempt obligations issued by or on behalf of the school corporation, including the bonds, as well as other bonds and temporary 
loan warrants of the school corporation will not exceed $15 million in the calendar year 2023 pursuant to section 148F4D of the code, the school corporation irrevocably allocates the building corporation $6,105,000 of its $15,000 limit for purposes of qualifying for the small governmental exception to the rebate requirement. Did y'all get that? Because there's going to be a quiz here in a couple of minutes. So. Right. Fantastic job. It's really fun. Okay. Um, and then that will, we need to vote on that as well. All right. Uh, motion to accept uh, the third resolution reapproving the form of the building corporation. So moved. Thank you, Stephen. Second. Thank you, Jenny. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries seven to zero. Okay, number four, reimbursement resolution. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the school corporation declares its official intent to acquire, construct, or rehabilitate the projects with proceeds of obligation incurred on behalf of the school corporation in a principal amount not to exceed $6,105,000 for the purpose of paying or reimbursing costs of the projects and to approve obligations issued by leasing entity that will lease the projects to the school corporation. Be it further resolved that the school corporation reasonably expects to reimburse itself from proceeds of obligations issued on behalf of the school corporation for costs of the projects paid prior to the issuance of the obligation. Questions there? And I will accept a motion for the reimbursement resolution. Move. Mark? Second. Second. Ethan? <coughs> Good. Number five. Oh, sorry. All in favor. Sorry. Motion carries seven to zero. Number five. Approval of the proposal for Viridian Architectural Design for RMS, HVAC, and lighting upgrade. So Terry Thornsberry is here, and I'm ask him to do just a very short presentation of the projects that we're looking at, the before and why there are concerns there, and then to also, also answer any questions in regards to entering in the agreement with them. So Terry, if you'd like to come forward and share some of the information you've gathered and then... Alright, thank you. Um, Alright, good evening everyone. Um, So as per Janet's request, um, she had asked me to put together a presentation to go over the projects that we're proposing for the 2023 bond. Um, I'm Terry Thornsbury, for those of you who don't know me, I recognize a few faces around the table, there's a few new ones. Um, I've been working with the school corporation since about 2011, um, so the last 12 years. Um, seems like yesterday. Uh, <laughs> um, we have done over 100 projects with the school corporation over the years. and. Um, Got to know these buildings very, very well. So, again, I'm going to focus on the 2023 bond projects. <coughs> so, the first one is Riddle Elementary roof replacement. Um, so, Riddle's roof is one of the remaining uh, roofs that has not been replaced and it is aged and uh, has quite a few issues because I get quite a few um, emails about roof leaks and other things, and I usually help out trying to get uh, the roofing contractor over here to help fix those issues and put band-aids on this one in most cases uh, because we knew we would eventually replace it. So um, this project, the bullet points there, demo and re uh, remove the remaining portions of the old roof system. I'm going to show you some images here in a second. Replace the roof curbs for the HVAC equipment, roof drains, install new roof edge metal. Um, one other thing that's... Um, an issue on this building is the same Columbia had, so the gymnasium 
um, is a brick structure that comes up through the building and brick will allow water through it. So that water gets into the wall, comes down, shows up in the ceiling. I know where it shows up in the ceiling all the time and it actually shows up all the way down when real heavy rains occur. Um, so we're gonna waterproof that wall and we're gonna put siding on it. We're gonna put a new sign on uh, Riddle just like we did Columbia. So they'll look very similar. Um, Install a new building sign, like I said, and then uh, right now, actually, we've been working ahead just because we're overachievers. Um, we're about 65% done with the design already with the intent of getting it done and out to bid because we know the roofing contractors fill up their schedules fast and we need to get it out to bid later this year in order to um, get it on a summer schedule for next year. So um, as soon as you guys um, secure the bonds, we will put it out to bid and uh, be ready to, to run with it as fast as we can as far as uh, getting that going. So um, right now that is planned for some <coughs> 2.4, like I said, and probable cost is about $1.4 million. 1.4? 1.4. Scott, we'll let you answer. It's just having issues. Okay. So uh, this is the roof at Riddle. You can see the um, part on the left that's white, that's new, that we did a few years ago. Uh, the part that is gray is the old part. Uh, and then the white square that's kind of in the middle, that actually is the gym roof. And it is uh, a different roofing system than the white that's on the left. Um, and it, uh, it is the most brittle, <coughs> actually falling apart, it's called Geoflex. Um, and the roofing contractors told me for years that it's failing visibly. So, um, so I can show them <laughs> But the black roof on the balance of the building is still. It's actually a balanced roof. You can see in the pictures there, it's stone okay. over top of a built up uh, uh, tar roof system, basically. Yep. Uh, the picture on the left is hard to see in here, but that's a picture of the brick. The brick's actually spalling and falling off the building, and that's because water freezes in that wall. Um, and then chunks of brick fall off. Okay. So, and that's I, what was happening in Columbia as well. Yeah, same thing, same exact thing. Um, the picture on the left that you can't see on the bottom is actually the, the metal siding and sign that we did at Columbia uh, to improve that situation. As far as I know, we no longer have water coming through those walls because we put a band-aid on top of a band-aid and uh, really made it waterproof. So, okay. um, all right. Those of you who have been on the board for many, many years, Jenny's been on the board long enough. Um, Sandy was here. She would ask me how many, how many roofs I have. Right. Uh, there's a lot. So, because you think, I thought roof, you were going to give a number. How in the world, how world can a roof cost $1.4 million? It's because it's a lot of area. So, um, and a big mess to tear off and replace it entirely. So, the bigger, more exciting project. Uh, this one's still evolving a little bit, um, is the middle school natatorium renovation. Um, that space um, has had issues over the years with humidity issues. When we replaced the roof on the middle school, um, that roof, we literally, we have a video of it when we're standing there, we cut a four foot square out of the roof and you're standing there and all of a sudden you see the roof deck just disappear. Because it was so brittle and rusted out that it just collapsed. And I'll show you pictures where that lands, but um, uh, that was a big undertaking um, to deal with because the ceiling system in there was actually supported by that roof deck, which was rusted out completely. So luckily it didn't fail over time, um, but uh, we're gonna help deal with that. So we're gonna demo and remove the existing ceiling system in its entirety. We're gonna remove the lighting in there. The lighting is um, uh, going out slowly you know, if you go in there and turn the lights on, you're like, okay, half the lights aren't on. Well, they don't work anymore. And the wiring is so brittle that it can't be fixed. Um, so it's not an option to try to replace it. Um, the HVAC system, so that, when it was originally built, has heat only. The original unit is still in the mechanical room. 
Um, it's never had air conditioning or dehumidification. It's kind of important for a pool that's putting out a lot of heat and moisture all the time. So um, we're going to do a new HVAC unit that's going to be ground mounted, similar to the one that's uh, around the corner on the middle school for the chiller. Um, because the new unit's so big, it won't fit inside the building, and it's so heavy, we can't put it on top of the building. So we're going to ground mount it and then enclose it so that you won't see it. Um, we're going to remove the mosaic tile um, on the floor, and we're going to do probably an epoxy floor system there, get rid of all those little brown and yellow tiles, it kind of dates the space. Um, remove asbestos that's in the mechanical room. We're going to evaluate the pool, because part of this project we have to empty the pool, and from what Jana remembers since she's been here, it's never been empty uh, in her time. So, uh, and Doug and I are talking about potentially addressing some uh, equipment for the pool as well. So that's why this is a still work in progress as far as exactly what we're doing. Um, why we have the pool empty? It's an opportunity to clean and uh, freshen up the inside of the pool, make sure we don't see any issues in there. Um, the walls in there, if you go into the natatorium, you'll notice that the ceiling starts about nine or 10 feet above uh, the walls. Well, the walls don't keep going after that. So we need to take the walls all the way up to the deck so that um, the space is enclosed and then we can heat and cool it the right way because years ago, you used to come in the um, main entrance of the middle school on Monday and you would get slapped in the face with chlorine because that would ventilate itself all the way over there. So we closed, we built a wall to close that off so it would stop doing that years ago once we figured out what it was doing. But this will remedy those issues, help make the, the, the space better and should be a lot more efficient to operate uh, as well. Uh, install new LED lighting. Uh, new HVAC ductwork, uh, renovate the existing mechanical room and turn that into a storage space, which is desperately needed in uh, the natatorium. We're still working on design scope and we've done our field verification. We're constantly doing uh, parts and pieces of that, so we're barely getting started on this one. Uh, and again, right now, um, and this is part of what we need to figure out, uh, the lead time on that, just that mechanical unit is 26 weeks right now, um, which is better than it used to be because we, used to, we have some that's been over a year. So, um, with that, we know we're going to have a long lead time to get the equipment to show up. So we're going to have to bid it and then approve at least the order of the equipment and then construction will start months later. Um, this potential would be a nine month project. So we're trying to, we're going to have to work with Jana and the uh, uh, schools as far as who uses the pool and we're going to lose it for a while. Um, but when it's all said and done, it'll be very similar to the um, look that we have in the gymnasium. As far as how the ceiling is going to be open, it's going to be bright and airy and not all closed in and dark and like that. So, um, this one right now, about 2.37 uh, million is what we're estimating for this one. And so, Terry, what I'm hearing you say in this is then obviously this has been a long time coming as far as needs in the auditorium, but one of the things we've been looking at is our operations costs, and it appears that this will help. It will. That as well. It will. Okay. Um, that, well, and, and part of scope and still needing to meet with Jana and others is uh, putting a cover on that pool would make a world of difference because it's like having a pot of water at home on the, on the oven with, or the stove with no lid on it. What's going to happen? Mm -hmm. It evaporates. So you're constantly dumping more heat and water into that to keep it at a certain level. And, um, and that's what happened to that roof over time. So you're, you're losing a lot of because of moisture up you're right. You're right. right, and in fact, there was one point I remember Janet calling me, it was raining in the gymnasium. She's like, how can it rain in the gymnasium? I'm like, are the doors open to the pool? Oh, yeah. And so none of that moisture was getting sucked out of the pool when it was all going over there and condensating on cold metal because it was cold outside. And it makes it rain. So, um, so yes, yeah, it should be a huge improvement. <laughs> um, and talking to Doug about the mechanic or the equipment for the pool itself, uh, we need to figure out what can be more efficient, what makes more sense. But we need to look at more of this project, so this number may change slightly depending on the scope as uh, we keep working through it. So, but we needed to get started on these things so that we weren't waiting because there's a timeline to spend this bond money, and we know this is a sizable project, so yeah. it's an important one. So, a few pictures with this one for those of you who don't get to spend time in there. Um, so, the picture on the right is just looking at space across the pool. And then you uh, zoom into the ceiling, you see all those little squares. And Doug and I were just there uh, 55 minutes ago or so. 
and there's one of those laying there that fell off. And I, over all the years of being here, I've never found one just laying there. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, how heavy is this? Because if it falls from 20 feet, is it gonna hurt? It weighs about two pounds. It's gonna hurt. Uh, and you probably go to the hospital. So you don't want those falling off. And what it is is the, the fasteners that hold it to the ceiling have rusted, and it just they just fall. So not a great design. Uh, the picture that's really you can't really tell what it is on the left. That's the chicken wire and the 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 it's basically steel rod. And that thing is like a paper mache plaster mess, and it's wires that hold that entire ceiling up. Uh, from above. So, so it's inside because the wall doesn't go all the way. Is that what? Right. Ooh. And it's held, now those wires are attached to the structural system that hold up the rope, but one of the most bizarre things. <laughs> and, uh, and, and basically what happens is the air in there just goes up into that space and then gets pulled out through fans in the roof. Uh, but the mechanical system blows out from up there too in the ductwork and people have crawled over the ductwork and crushed it. It's a big mess. It'll be, it's one of our projects we've been waiting and waiting and waiting mm -hmm. to deal with. Um, it's now time to deal with it. Uh, next slide. So again, more pictures of that. And that's the that's the mechanical room unit uh, right there with red buckets in front of it, um, which is about, um, I don't know, about fourth the size of the new unit. So the new unit's about half the size of the school bus. It's huge. Um, it weighs over 14,000 pounds, that's what we can't put it on the So it's heavy. Uh, but it'll have air conditioning and dehumidification. So even when the space doesn't need to be cooled, it'll keep the humidity down and it'll just um, deal with humidity by itself. So if you go in there sometimes, it is just hot and humid. And it's not today because the heater's broken. So, <laughs> so, but, uh, so yes, great improvements. Um, hopefully, make that space more efficient. Terry did that. That number you show, would that include a cover for the pool? No. No, there's certain things I'm talking about that we would love to do, but it's going to take a committee uh, to, to uh, agree to some of these things. And um, I'm just, Janet knows all the things I'd love to do in this space, and we have limited money. So yeah. we try to do what we can, but I've always just stood for we really need to put a cover on this thing. And in an ideal situation, it would be an automatic cover. You hit a button. That way nobody messes with it, it rolls up. But it's also a safety cover that way, in case someone fell into the pool with the cover on, they wouldn't, it, the cover would stop them. Yep. Yeah. So it's a safety thing too. So that may help, Todd would know maybe, if it would help on insurance costs and things like that too. So just all good things. Um, so is it like on the track? On the track? It would, okay. it would, yeah. Um, and then the last one is uh, an exciting, exciting project. It's domestic water piping and plumbing for the high school. Um, so the water piping in the high school, much like many, many high schools built in the 60s, because I'm dealing with this on another school corporation right now, it's made with galvanized pipe. So galvanized pipe, have, over time, gets little pinholes in it, and it'll leak. It'll leak a lot. And then when you shut it off to try to fix that leak, you turn it back on, it leaks somewhere else. And then it leaks somewhere else, and it leaks somewhere else. Well, Doug and I met over there last week, and there isn't a whole lot of that going on, luckily. You, so you don't have a lot of pinholes. The issues are um, the piping and the um, shutoffs on fixtures and the fixtures and other things. So I'm going to show you this picture here. But it's um, removed portions of the galvanized piping where we can and need to. Uh, remove and replace the existing shutoff valves in the mechanical room above the ceilings. Uh, remove asbestos pipe insulation that's still in the building. Um, add new shutoff valves needed throughout the building. Remove and replace the existing shutoff valves at existing plumbing fixtures. So um, much like at home, you have a leaky faucet in the bathroom and you get under the sink and you turn off the valves and that turns the water off so you, your husband can fix the, the leaky sink if they're the one to fix it because that's who gets fixed at my house. Um, <laughs> and then you realize, hey, that valve isn't shutting off the water. Oh, now I've got to go shut off the water for the whole house and then replace that valve in a place of the faucet or it all goes backwards. So in the case of a picture I'm gonna show you in the kitchen at high school, uh, Doug showed me. So that picture in the bottom left is a faucet and you see how much water is running there, right there in the picture. It runs like that 24 seven. Because Doug tried to shut the water off on the two valves on the wall right below that and they're both broken. So it doesn't turn off. So he said, okay, I'm gonna go 
backwards. So he went above the ceiling and he tried to shut one of them off and the hand broke off. And then he tried to shut the other one off and it said it just absolutely will not move. So the next one is you shut it off back further or remain back in the mechanical room, um, which is in the picture right above that. So that, that's where the water comes into the building. Uh, as you can see, it leaks a little bit there. Um, and then it also, the picture on the upper right is hard to see, but it actually goes down under the building. There's tunnels under the high school. Um, and it goes through there. So, it, and then the picture on the lower right is where it is in the mechanical room. It runs through the ceilings, it runs under the building, it's all over the place. We did a takeoff just to replace piping. Just the piping, main piping, and not even touch where it comes down into the wall or all the valves at the plumbing fixtures and all that. And that number alone was over $4 million just to replace the pipe. So we're not going to do that because we can't afford to. So we're going to step back and we're going to deal with plumbing fixtures, shut off valves, the valves in the ceiling, and work our way through the building to fix those issues. And then whatever we have left over, we'll deal with bigger issues, like big shut off valves, like the main valve for the whole building. We run into it in buildings all the time where, hey, that valve is the original. When's the last time it's been used? Never. And so it's, just, it, it's not going to close. Um, and it's, so you end up having to shut down the building and, and take care of it. We, the same thing happened on the big mechanical project, for those of you who were around then for the high school, where um, Herman and Getz tried to shut off things so we could replace piping. And then like, it doesn't do anything. So they had to cut the piping out. And it's, it's a huge mess. So that's what this project is. It's, it is it's something that needs done because um, if and when that starts to leak uh, overall, then it creates big messes. And I has another school corporation that we're working with right now it happened this last summer uh, in part of the building. And they came in on a Monday and found a flooded hallway. Luckily, they have terrazzo floors. And it didn't hurt anything, but it had ruptured in the ceiling you know, on a Saturday or something. And they came in and found it. And sure enough, it's, it's all due to the same type of piping that was popular back in the 60s. So. Um, so that's the projects in a nutshell. I think my next slide has got just yeah, questions. So um, we're going to do our best to try to spend this money wisely and the biggest bang for a buck like we try to do all the time um, and, and just work our way through this. The, the piping one is going to be the last one of, of the three. Um, it's less critical, and I'm going to get in a bucket and some towels and help Doug fix that thing. But uh, other than that, um, the bigger, more important one is going to be Riddle Roof because it has been a problem for years. And then the natatorium is about time to be able to shut that down. So, questions, comments? Gary, how much was the um, total cost on that plumbing? I'm right saying. now, it's just the balance of what's going to be left. So, okay. I, I put it at $2 million. Um, We may end up putting more into the natatorium. So, that's going to come out of that plumbing budget. So, it's all a numbers game at this point. Okay. Thank you, Terry. All right. So at this time, we would need to um, vote on the approval of the proposal for Viridian Architectural Design for the RMS HVAC and lighting upgrade. I will accept a motion. So we're voting just on the RMS portion, and the rest was informational. Is that correct, Jenna? Right. So moved. Thank you, Jenny. Second. All right. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries seven to zero. We have the third and final reading of the policies uh, lay, uh, laid out for you. Uh, and there are several. Um, I'm not going to read through all of them because they are or all the numbers because it's just way too hard. But anyway, um, if you. Uh, have any questions on any of those policies that we've been talking about since July, August, September? Yeah, um, I'd be glad to answer those. Any questions on the new policies? If not, I'll entertain a motion that we uh, that we uh, go ahead and vote on these and put them in the books. So, so, so. Okay. Casey. All those in favor, raise your right hand. 
Motion carries seven to zero. Next, we have uh, approval of the RMS Choir's re uh, request for an exception to the Wednesday rule on September 27, 2023. Cassie, do you mind covering just a bit of that? Sure. Um, I know they do a performing arts calendar yearly, um, and what they didn't expect was there was an athletic event added, um, and it went on top of when the choir concert was um, with athletics and what that new Wednesdays and whatnot. It was easier to ask to move the choir concert, and he requested and, and talked with Meg now at the high school to combine with their date, which is on a Wednesday. Um, so he wrote that up, and then I just added to the bottom that this is due to won't be commonplace, I don't believe, unless they like doing it together, and I think all the high schools are over the same program. Yeah. Sure. yeah. But for the rest of the year, they're already scheduled out, not on Wednesdays. Okay, so. any questions? Okay, so yes. this requires the high school concert to be bumped back. I think time, 30 minutes, possibly? I mean, if my calendar was correct. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, which is, I mean, <coughs> Katie, unless anybody wants to pull one of these out, all of these approvals can be taken together with one vote if you want to. All right, great. Any questions about the uh, RMS choir and the Wednesday night exception? All right, moving on. Number eight, approval of the overnight field trip for the wrestling team on November 23rd and the sleep in at RHS. Number nine is approval of an overnight field trip for the wrestling team on December 21st, 2023. Uh, Joe Bruvan holiday duels in Rensselaer at Rensselaer High School. Number 10, approval of an overnight field trip for the wrestling team on December 28th, North Montgomery Holiday Tournament, Crawfordsville, Indiana. Uh, number 11, approval of an overnight field trip for the wrestling team on February 9th, 2024. IHSA semi-state wrestling tournament in Fort Wayne and number 12 approval of an overnight field trip for wrestling team on February 14th 2024 IHSA state wrestling tournament in Evansville right. any questions on any of those I would entertain a motion that we <coughs> approve the Middle school choir and the wrestling field trips at this point. So moved. Thank you, Jenny. Second. And Ethan. All those in favor? Raise your right hand. Motion carries seven to zero. All right. Next we have the uh, information, first reading of bylaw 1064.5. Oh, 164.5, thank you. Yes. All right, which is member <coughs> participation in meetings through electronic means of communication. And this is, uh, do we need to read it all? We've been over, over it. Okay, we went over it at the study session, and uh, so we'll just move forward. We don't need to act on that at this time. Okay. Next we have donations. Okay, at Columbia, at Columbia Elementary, we have $600 for the Kindergarten Honeywell trip from the Northern Indiana Community Foundation. We also have, for Columbia Elementary, $500 for the first grade Honeywell trip, again, from the Northern Indiana Community Foundation. The third one for Riddle is $500 for the Apple Orchard trip, also from the Northern Indiana Community Foundation. We're very grateful for that. If, if I may, all of those that say the Northern Indiana Community Foundation. I met with um, a donor who would like to remain anonymous. We spent a great deal of time together. I asked principals and directors what um, uh, needs that they may have that would help promote programming, things that would be out of uh, what we have already budgeted for, and they sent in proposals to us, and I met with uh, Brian Johnson and a donor who would like to remain anonymous. 
in this donor, anything that you see from Northern Indi Indiana Community Foundation are ones that came through um, that private donor that we had conversations with and I spent probably 90 minutes with. So Jana, is that, I know we had established a few years ago, a donor established, not us as the corporation, um, a fund for uh, Rochester Community Schools specifically at the Community Foundation. Was, were these monies funneled through that or this was a different? This is a different. So did they create a new fund or they just wanted the Community Foundation to handle the monies? They just wanted the foundation, my understanding is they wanted the foundation to handle the I'm, this, they have donated in the past. I'm curious why not to use the fund that's established as the vehicle. I would think that that would, if there were any redundancies in administrative fees, that that would be. I don't know. So, yeah, I mean, not that this affects right here, but if, if those kinds of things happen, and it's something to let people know, you could donate $10 or $100 or $50,000 if you wanted through this fund at the Community Foundation that's, that's for Rochester Community School. Okay, uh, the fourth item, also Columbia Elementary, the amount is unknown. Pumpkins for uh, fall break for their fall festival from the Optimist Club. Also, Riddle Elementary is receiving an unknown uh, donation, amount of the donation for pumpkins for the fall break festival from the Optimist Club. The middle school uh, received a $500 donation from the for RMS PBIS program, and that is from the Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Um, okay. uh, RMS also received $8,058.50 funding for Stacy's Closet from the Stacy Carvey Shane Halls Foundation. Uh, okay. Next we have RHS. $1,500 RHS catering program, kitchen needs, and that was from the Northern Indiana Community Foundation as well. Uh, RHS, $175, $35 gift cards for RHS Zebra of the Week, and that's from the Bagel Shop. RHS, unspecified supplies for Artist of the Month, and take home Borough bags for students, third year for donation. And that is from Matt and Julie Sutton. Uh, the corporation received a donation for $500 for an AED from the Community Foundation. Uh, the corporation also received uh, $1,500 for the fax program from the Community Foundation. And the corporation also received $1,500 for the letters. Mm -hmm. Program it's a professional development. Got it. Okay. From the Northern Indiana Community Foundation. So, um, very grateful to all of our donors and a special shout out to our anonymous donor. Um, we are incredibly uh, blessed by your donations and thank you very much, all of you. So, do we have to accept those donations? All right. Anybody want to not accept them? Just check it. Okay. Um, <laughs> If we all entertain a motion. So moved. Casey. Second. Ethan. <laughs> all those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries seven to zero. <coughs> the personnel report. Columbia Elementary Fall Intercession. Brittany Ross, first grade teacher at her hourly rate. Michelle Yeager, kindergarten teacher at her hourly rate. Ashley Shuck, instructional assistant at her hourly rate. Real Elementary, Deanna Lewis, special needs instructional assistant, hourly rate of $12.59. Transportation Department, Seth Manns, corporation bus driver. We got one. Okay, <laughs> good. All right. Athletic Department, Sandy Campbell, volunteer RHS volleyball. Mike Smith, volunteer coach for RMS Tennis Club. FMLA, Kristen Horn, intermittent through no, uh, shoot, September 13th, 2023. Alexis McSherry, maternity leave, 823-23 through 929-23. Returning to the classroom October 2nd. Resignation, 
Carleen Musselman, effective September 11th, 2023. I would uh, accept a motion to approve the personnel report as read. I have a quick question. Yes. Can you know me? When we have um, people who are normally employed with us as instructional assistants fill in as like the intercession teacher, do we pay them more than their IA rate? I would assume so. Does that need to be reflected on here? Because there's at least one person that is, and that is so that we make sure that they are paid for what they're fulfilling. Do you know, Jason, what that hourly rate was? For that? I, I know which teacher it is, and uh, it's already been communicated to. Um, and um, Kathy, they're they're tracking it. I don't know what was put on that or how that was put on there. I mean, and the only reason I ask is because my understanding is one of the main reasons we approve these personnel reports is so that the auditors can match the the person with the pay. So that's why I just wanted to make sure that. So if they already have that, that should be a simple fix to add to it. Okay. I would uh, accept a motion with um, with the amendment. <coughs> Jenny brought up. As soon as we get that to Amber, then we can include that in the minutes. So. Uh, so moved. Stephen, second. Casey. All right. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries seven zero. Next, we have the superintendent's business. Mr. Snyder, do you mind starting us off? Nope. Luke told me I didn't talk too long, so I'm not going to keep this quick. <laughs> you guys, uh, things that have happened over You're the last welcome. month. <clears throat> we completed our Alice drill, which I told you guys we were preparing to uh, do the month before, and uh, our staff did a fantastic job with that. Our kids did a great job all around good training. We completed our Stop the Bleed training with our staff. Uh, had a, a fantastic turnout of that. Even had uh, IAs attend that. It, it's open up to anybody that wants to attend. All of our teachers are required to attend it. And um, we had IAs that came in on their own time because they wanted to learn more about how that process works. Um, and that's good training um, just for any time, just like your uh, CPR training and things like that. I mean, you could use that in a, on your way home or on a bike accident. So um, we, we really uh, enjoy, we don't enjoy doing that training but it's, it's very good training for our staff. Um, we have, last, we always have kids that uh, take down our flags at the end of the day, um, but we've kind of um, upped that a little bit. So uh, what we're doing now is having classes volunteer um, to take the flag down at the end of the day. And uh, uh, Donna, who just came on board with us, um, she is um, taking all of our kids and teaching them the proper ways to, not all the kids, the kids of the uh, classes that choose to do it and the students that choose to do it. It's, it's an optional thing for them, but um, they're spending a full month of learning about how to properly take care of the flag, bring it down, they fold it up at the end of the day. You've probably seen pictures on social media of that, um, but we've got a little more organized now and um, at the end of the month those classes were um, giving uh, giving a little bit of a pizza party for just taking care of our flag and, uh, and it's been a really, uh, the kids really enjoy it. Again, optional for them. If they want to participate, they can. They don't have to. Um, but they have a lot of fun doing it, and, uh, and it's really neat to see them out there taking care of that every day. So if anybody ever asks why our flag is down so early at Columbia um, in the afternoon, um, we do Reveille at uh, 245, so, or uh, retreat. So, yeah, and um, the, uh, the we've already booked up, like, a, all of our classes, we opened it up for classes to do it, and we've already booked for the whole year. So um, it's really, really neat to see those kids doing that. Uh, we had a student just recently who um, you may have seen some pictures over social media. Uh, Mom has shared that I can share um, publicly, but we had a student, um, his name is Aiden, and uh, he just recently completed his uh, uh, cancer treatments. He um, was, had, had leukemia. And um, he was fortunate enough to finish his final treatment and uh, is now cancer free. So um, we um, sent a couple of, a couple of us went up to 
the uh, Children's Hospital up in South Bend and we're fortunate enough to be there when he got to ring the bell up at the hospital. Um, but then we also did a little ceremony for Columbia and um, like we have with the seniors when they walk the, the halls, we had Aiden walk the halls and uh, we brought in one of the bells from the uh, fire department and they had an opportunity. He got, he got to ring that thing and ring it loud in the, in the hallways and um, it was just really special. The kids made signs for him. Um, Nurse Butler at the time, she sent out information about um, the type of cancer and we shared that with our students so the students would understand why we were doing it and uh, just an all around very good um, um, special very thankful event that we were able to do so I wanted to share that uh, things we've got coming up we have zebra zone our uh, first zebra zone next Friday uh, we are working on integrity as uh, this month's character trait and it has gone very well we have a uh, Duke energy show scheduled for Monday um, Duke energy provides free shows uh, they're just little skit shows they send in a couple of people and uh, they talk about energy ways to save energy at home and different things like that. Uh, they do not try to sell anything. Uh, they do a really good job. The kids enjoy it. We've done that for several years. We have intercession coming up from 9 through 12 of October. We have the Fall Festival, Fall Festival Enrichment, which is um, on the 11th of October. And uh, we are doing a fire safety program with the Rochester Fire Department um, on October 24th and 25th. And that is when they come out and set up their um, firehouse in our gym and every student in the building gets to go through that and meet the firefighters uh, talk about fire safety and uh, just an all-around good program for for the students to be able to uh, not only use when they're at school but uh, they focus really on home safety as well because um, we, we we teach them a lot about the school safety but they learn a lot about other things at home that uh, that we may not hit on so we're excited about that I appreciate the communication about Aiden and also that there was representation of thank you, Jason, and your group of building and being with him to celebrate and soften. That just goes above and beyond. And also, I don't know if this was like a directive from you or if you were really in the lunchroom, but I also heard that Trey kids must try at least one vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate that. If, you, if you're successful at that, I, I would be very impressed. I, I, I'll probably get in trouble for forcing him, but I asked him to. I didn't force him to. I asked him to try the vegetables, at least two bites, and then I went around and asked him what they thought of it, and it turned out pretty well. So I heard cucumber but yeah. but that. You know. Well, that, that's a good goal. try to do what I can. <laughs> that sounds like a good thing. <laughs> um, our fourth graders went to the Trail of Courage last Friday and that went very well. I hear the teachers like it when they buy the bird whistles on the way home from the bus. <laughs> so <I'm> <laughs> selling those, Trail of Courage. <laughs> uh, the Barkman Optimist Bunch is doing a great job. Uh, they're, they're really awesome. It's a, um, and they're busy selling lemonade and actually apple cider as well and pretzels on Fridays, raising money for different things for to help our school, it's a great program. Um, you know, the Optimist Club here in Rochester does a phenomenal job incorporating them, and I know they're helping to pick pumpkins and things like that as well. Um, as Mr. Schneider said, we're prepping for intercession. Our invites are going out, and next week is College Go Week, so we'll be having some dress-up days and promoting college. Any questions? Um, we had some teacher eye ready training, which was very helpful. Um, we have some more of that coming up, but the teachers really appreciated getting to use our data that we have and work through that with some experts in eye ready. And we are liking it already, um, and we are doing a lot with our data as well already because it's vastly different than what the NWEA does, which we knew would be the case. Our fall athletics are very busy and doing well. Um, we also started our Artist of the Month, and so you'll see a donation coming through next month for uh, the same people doing the same thing at the middle school, so that was exciting. ZBN put out their first episode last week. Um, we had an awesome homecoming. We, we piggybacked on the dress-up days of the high school, and then Fist Bump Friday was a huge success at RMS. If you saw any of those posts, kids loved coming to school that Friday with the big zebra head blown up. It was a great time. Lots of kids went through 
dozens of times. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. The high school football boys were there fist bumping everybody, and it was a good time. It was raining, and still they went through several times. Um, our activity period at RMS has really um, blown up this year in a great way. We've had lots of new activities going on at RMS during that time. Um, we did some butterfly releases. We've got ukuleles being taught how to use those. We've got a big fantasy football thing going on. Uh, scrapbooking, Junior Optimist meets during that time. Rockets, we have a fishing and ecology club that's new this year, as well as woodworking, jewelry making, and gardening. Um, coming up, we have our PBIS day. We're going to do some flag football with our fall festival at the middle school. Um, intercession invites went out today. We have an enrichment opportunity with Pickleball and Mr. Kissler. And I'll, our fall sports will wrap up at that time. Any questions? You yeah. mentioned this, Kat, I'm sorry. No, you mentioned this, and I did hear this was um, an I-team decision. Thank you for coordinating the dress-up days across schools. I just thought that was so cool. I'm sure families appreciated it. Plus, it was neat to see on social media and have them all be the same. So they were fun. Excellent. Um, I was just going to back on the, the choir, choir yeah. concert. Do they still, to my knowledge, they had their dates set every year repeated to pretty avoid much. any conflict? Yeah, pretty much. So that's still... Yep, thing. a performing okay. arts calendar. Yep. Okay. Just make it through. Yes. To clarify that issue, it's a sixth grade volleyball game, and Secretary Marks, I hope that gets on film that I call him Secretary <laughs> Marks, Gary Marks, who's phenomenal at that, read it as RMS Choir, and until three years ago, RMS Choir was seventh and eighth grade, yep. and it wouldn't have conflicted with sixth grade, so it was a miscommunication between Secretary Marks and I. I blame Oscar. Which cost <laughs> 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 All in favor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mr. Hans? Yeah. Um, I'm going to be going back and forth a little bit of what we got coming up and what we've already done because when I put this list together on the way back from Monticello today with the ladies in the office, uh, we have a chili cook off team that's been uh, put together. I had to test 15 different chilies the other day. I mean, I'm built for that, but <laughs> after you get about four chilies in, they all taste kind of the same. But there was one that I think could go out there and win that chili cook-off for the school corporation. Um, we had an alumni member, Dylan Weaver, who's in EMT now, brought an ambulance, which caused a little bit of a headache because mm -hmm. I didn't give the corporation a heads up. So the building across the parking lot was concerned we had an issue, but we got that taken care of. <laughs> That was neat. He presented to the biomed classes. They got to check out the ambulance. It was a pretty cool hands-on experience for those students. Um, we did complete the homecoming uh, activities successfully, won the homecoming game, had a good week of those uh, activities. The bonfire was a success. We didn't burn down the fairgrounds there, Mr. Fairboard member. Um, Mr. Lau had spatula presentations. If you've never seen the spatula presentations, the kids do a remarkable job of designing, <clears throat> patenting, and it's kind of a competition within that class. And then we had five outside judges. And I don't even want to say, I can name three of them real quick, and I will forget to who the other two are, so I'm not going to name them. But we appreciated them coming in and judging that and handing out uh, different prizes to those kids. Mr. Pearson took the kids on his annual uh, river rafting trip the other day when it was about 68 degrees out, so that was probably a good time. Uh, the FFA pork chop dinner is success as it is every year. Um, I think our boys enjoyed fist bump Friday as much as the middle school kids. And I know the big push now is we're trying to get it over to Riddle and Columbia before football season's over. Um, I can't take credit for any of that, so I know that people are starting to reach out. If they haven't, they will be. I promise kids we're going to try and bring it to you. <laughs> our Spanish students attended the Indiana Latino Summit College and Career Fair which is um, a pretty neat experience for them. They get kind of taught a little bit about resumes, about the college experience, the opportunity for them to get some college um, funding and so forth. <coughs> the, uh, Hernandez has taken them to that, and that's a pretty good experience for them. Uh, American Studies did a pretty neat thing. They took all of our juniors out, and I think they had 12 pontoons with 12 pontoon drivers. They did a tour of Lake Manitou, learned the history of that. 
Uh, one of our American Studies teachers has lived in this town his whole life, and he said he learned more there than he probably ever knew about the lake. So it was a pretty neat experience for adults and kids. Um, our seniors this year put together a sunrise breakfast where they came in about 6.30. Uh, a couple of the senior dads went out there and cooked, and they just kind of hung out on the football field. It was kind of a neat experience for the kids. The fall play has been cast. Um, and athlete, or FFA soil judging has started. Uh, that's a big deal. We usually place pretty high and go to nationals in that. Um, eighth grade is headed to the Logan Sport Career Center uh, this week for their annual field trip there to see what is offered down there. Um, we have intercession coming up and after 12 more days of school until fall break. And then we do have an enrichment trip planned down to Ivy Tech Kokomo to check out the um, like mechanical stuff that they have down there that we offer at the beginning of and they could really expand for students. So we got that pushed out to kids today. Uh, we do have College Go Week coming up, which I think all of us do. Uh, the guidance department planned that today. I went in the building today, so I don't know exactly what all is going on at RHS, but they'll have a great plan for that. Um, the girls' golf team won the TRC, and they got second in sectional today, and are going to regional on Saturday. Uh, the football team's 4 0 in conference. The big deal in athletics, though, is we just had a meeting with EventLink, which is our athletic provider. We host several IHSA tournament <laughs> events, and this year the IHSA is requiring that we accept digital tickets. Mm -hmm. So for the public to hear and for you guys to be able to answer questions, if you have questions, please let us know. I believe starting with next Tuesday or next Thursday's soccer game, because we're going to start with soccer, work our way to volleyball, and then try and do Northfield football, digital tickets will be offered for Rochester High School sports because it's mandatory to offer it for the volleyball regional that we're gonna host for the HSA, and we need to practice before we bring all the outside people in. Um, so that's what we got going on in RHS, and I'm sure I missed a ton, but uh, we'll go with that. Anything, questions? I would just like to say, please extend my eternal gratitude to the culinary arts class. They're excited about it. Super excited that they were so excited about it. The that is, is we said no because we're on fall break and the kids were mad at us. So Mrs. Masterson gave in to the kids, so now they're really excited about it. Yeah, no, that was fantastic. And then driving up to see the Fist Home Friday, I didn't didn't know anything about it, and I drove up to drop Gabriel off, and here is the zebra and. I think I was more excited about it than he was. <laughs> I was like, that is so cool. So whoever's idea that was, yeah, I can't so think cool. Either. It was FCA and football moms, mm -hmm. and I think, maybe it was another group. It was not my idea, but I happily said yes. It, it was really amazing to drive up and to see that. I mean, it was just like, oh my gosh, it was, it was great. I would love to see the little ones yeah. be able there to were, pull up and see that. There were siblings that were upset that they couldn't get out. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Mrs. Bowers with Food Service. Our annual financial report has been submitted. Um, we have sent out notifications for the carryover statuses to households to make sure anybody that wants to recertify can. There's not really a lot out there that possibly could because some of them are the ones that qualify because of COVID. And with the COVID restrictions going, some of them no longer qualify, but we are trying to work with those households to make sure we can get them recertified if they can. Um, we also met with the, or I and, and the manager at middle school met with the fifth grade facts class. We took them through the cafeteria, showed them how the equipment worked, talked about how we do our venues, why it has to be placed, answered any questions or anything that they wanted to learn. Um, and I met with our new field nutrition specialist, so we have a new one this year. And coming up, the sixth grade facts class would like to do the same. Come in, learn the equipment, and ask and answer questions for them. The high school culinary class is gonna come in and we're gonna do a little cooking demonstration on how each pieces of our equipment works. <coughs> And our verification for our application processes start October 1st. So anybody that has applied for free and reduced lunches, um, it is a random pick as far as what percentage. Last year, there were three applications that we had to send this out to. And this year, it'll be based on whoever we get back in before that October 1st date. Any questions? 
Thank you. <clears throat> We've been working on the twister. That's been giving us a headache, Don and I. So, and I would like to thank Jana and her family for the use of their UTV while we're trying to get it fixed. And then uh, we're still trying to do some storm damage cleanup over at Riddle. We still have trees down that we're trying to get cleaned up. And I just wanted everybody to know that Don went back to four days a week last week, so he went back down to part-time. So he's not gonna be working five days a week anymore. Um, and I really appreciate the patience that everybody has given both him and I since it's, we're just kind of sort of limited staff right now. So I um, appreciate the patience from everybody. Yeah, we're trying our best to get everything done in a timely manner, but it's all taken a little bit of time. Uh, thank the board for, we got our two new buses, drivers love them. Uh, got a new driver as you guys seen, he's about halfway through his training, proceeding very well. Uh, still looking for some sub drivers. Sub drivers would be wonderful right now, and uh, I'm the only one that can drive. And we're holding our own. But, the buildings and everybody even the board thank you for everything patience it's a rough start but we got we got it almost figured out and it's a smooth it's getting smoother but we just thank you all for what you think guys do for transportation side and in the school <laughs> so, well just one quick thing um, just for the public to put this together you know our transportation department is doing a fantastic job and if you would look at it since we're now looking at replacing buses the amount of money the school corporation is spending on buses to transportate or to transport your children um, maybe our public could use the buses a little more and cut back on our um, mom dad grandma whoever Pick them up, dropping them off, and creating additional issues there. Uh, everything would run a little smoother. But we already spent a lot of money on the school corporation transporting kids. So just wanted to point that out there that it's there. So should use it. I'd just like to share um, tomorrow morning at uh, 9 o'clock, we begin our ambassador program. I know the team is going to be there for introductions. We've had about eight responses. Um, a few I haven't heard one way or the other, so we may have more who show up tomorrow. So very much looking forward to launching the ambassador program tomorrow. I do want to thank Mrs. Shelley and Mrs. Keller. We uh, started informal bargaining, just ran through some numbers. Mrs. Murphy was there just to double check to make sure we are comparing apples to apples as far as teacher, years of experience, those types of things. So it's just basic spreadsheets that are being completed, but we probably spent an hour and a half, two hours this morning together. I think it's safe to say, a race for you, a race for you. <laughs> <laughs> throwing money everywhere. I money don't think that was said at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't recall that. <laughs> It'll be on the minutes for the last study session. There's money for everyone. And then I want to thank the office uh, staff. I know uh, Todd has been in and out of the office and I just feel a great unity within uh, the administrative office and among all of the directors and principals who are here. So thank you all for your patience and support and, and helping to keep the workflow going. It means a lot that everybody's um, helping out. Uh, the principals have already shared fall breaks coming up October 5th through the 13th. So please make sure as a parent if you have questions, if you have concerns about remediation or enrichment programs that you reach out to those principals, we want to hear from you. We want to help with that and we want to make sure that your students are receiving the services that they need. And that's all that I have. It's a busy schedule.
Thank you all for your time this evening. Thank you to every eye.